Today we're going to be looking at this webcam, but it's no ordinary webcam. It can do that many things a normal webcam can't. It's 4K, so it's really high quality. It's got HDR as well. It's got gesture control, so you can actually tell it what to do with your hands. It's got dual microphones, and it's also got a two-axis gimbal as well, and autofocus and tracking. The front of the box is pretty straightforward. It says Osbod, which is the name of it, 4K, which is the model, well, part of the model because it's classed as a tiny 4K. It doesn't mention that on there. Otherwise, it's pretty basic what it actually tells you on the front of the box. I think adding a bit more on there would actually let people know what it can do. The back and the sides of the boxes are very plain and basic. It doesn't tell you much. It just tells you what's included inside the box. There's not really any specifications or anything like that. It is multilingual, but again, it only really tells you what's in the box. So inside the box, we had this card envelope here, which includes a piece of paper about gestures. It's also got a QR code and you can scan to see how to set it up and so forth. You've got warranty information there, which no one will probably ever read. You've also got quite a thick manual as well, but it is multilingual. So not all of it is what you need to read unless you want to read all the other different languages. Also inside the box, you had this case here. So it's a nice hard case. You can keep your camera in and that's what all the bits came in. So first of all, we We've got a stand, that's a magnetic stand, which will allow you to attach it to the back of a laptop or the top of a laptop, as you can see there. And then it just clips on and it will hold it in place with a little sticky bit there as well, which you can obviously allow it to get more of a drip if you need to use it. You've got USB type C to USB type C connection there. That's to power and send the data back and forth. Don't worry if you haven't got USB type C connection on your device, it does have an adapter which allows you to turn one end into USB A so you're able to charge it. Now, depending on your device, it might run absolutely fine just through that cable. Depends on how much power it's actually sending through the USB cable. Now, if you haven't got enough power with that one cable, there is an additional cable with USB Type-A on one end and then a DC jack on the other, which you plug into there, which will give it a little bit more juice just in case your device is unable to send it enough through the USB Type-C. So let's have a look at the camera itself. So the cables that come with it are one and a half meters long. That's both of them if you need to use both. So that should give you plenty of room to plug it into your back of your PC and put it on top of your monitor or even put it on a tripod and so forth. So first of all, you've got your lens here. Obviously, that's the bit what obviously looks at you. It does have a little pull plastic there. What protects it, you can take off. It does swivel on its own, as you can see there, as well as up and down as well. Obviously, when it's powered on, it will keep in the position you want it to. And unless, obviously, you're moving around, then it will track you. It's got a little indicator bar there as well. Two little holes, which is really hard to see, which are basically the dual microphones. On the back, you've got your DC jack as well as USB type C. So obviously it needs to send data as well as power. And then on the bottom, you've got your tripod stand mount there. So you could screw that into a tripod. So have it on your desk or behind your machine or even to the side of it. Or let's just say you're in some sort of studio and you're filming exercises or whatever, you can have it standing up in the middle of the room and it'll basically follow you around. And you can do that with the, obviously the camera stand or a tripod. And as we said before, it's magnetic on the bottom so you can get this little stand here and it will clip on the back of your monitor so it'll sit on like that and then we'll pretend my hands are monitor and it'll stay like that okay so at the moment i'm using the webcam built into the laptop what i'm using the microphone i'm currently using is the microphone in the obs bot or osby bot or whatever you want to call it so this is going to give you a comparison of what it looks like when i'm using a laptop webcam compared to Osbybot. Um, obviously you can replace a normal desktop cam or whatever, it's really up to you, but it'll give you a rough idea. We're also filming this on our DSLR camera as well, so it gives you an idea from comparison and you'll be able to see it working and so forth. So now I'm just going to swap over onto the OBS camera. So just press the button, it takes a second to flick over, and there's the camera looking for me, finding me, and there you go, it's found me. And as you noticed, it moved on its own. Also, because we're on a slightly shaky desk, the standard laptop camera is wobbling a bit, where the o OBS camera, or Osbot camera, or whatever you want to call it, is stabilizing itself so when everything does shake it doesn't shake as much on the screen so i'm going to tilt to my left now which is your right and you'll see it's not moving at the moment but if i suddenly hold my hand up like this and go like that 
it turns the tracking on on the camera. So if I move to the left now, it will follow me, as you can see, and then I move to the right, and it will follow me up, down, however you want to. It will basically pick up where you are. So I'm gonna stand up now, so you're gonna see up my nose. There you go. As you can see, it's tracking me around the room with ease. And if you want the tracking to stop, you just hold your hand up again and do that and it stops and then I can go out of focus or out of the screen and it will not track me. Other things it can do, so let me just turn the tracking back on. Let's just make sure it is on. Yeah, you can actually zoom in and out. So the idea, let's just say you're doing a presentation, you walk up to a wall, you start writing on a chalkboard or a presentation board or whatever it may be, you can hold your hand up like this, go like that, and it will zoom in to you. Ooh, that's not very nice, close up of me. Um, or you can do that and it'll zoom out. So it's really up to you how you want it. You can zoom in and out. You just have to make sure your fingers are next to your head like that and it will then zoom in and out. I do find it now and again a little bit tricky to do. You have to just get your hand just right. Otherwise it keeps going in and out like it is at the moment. So let's just try that again. Out and drop my hand, and there we go, and it'll stay there. So it's just a case of getting used to it. But as you can see, it's doing this. It's got 4K options and all sorts. So let me just quickly show you the software, uh, which is here. So you can obviously manually do things on the software if you want. So let me just spread it out. There we go. So you've got the device status there, so you can go to sleep. You've got a gimbal reset as well, so it resets the position, or you can manually use the left and right buttons for it to move around, and you can focus on what you want, and you can manually set the zoom. You can order do, also do preset positions, so you can tell it what position you want it to be in. So you can change, we've seen those preset positions. Let's say if you know you're bored and you want it at a certain zoom level, at a certain uh, place in your room, you can focus on that area, and out of press of a button, it will focus directly on that area for you as well. You've got reset buttons and stuff. You can turn the gesture on and off. You can uh, alter the zoom. You've got uh, different tracking modes on there. So it gives you a bit of head row motion or standard. You've got screen mode, so landscape portrait, the usual stuff. Noise reduction. You can even set up global hotkeys, remote control language, and there's even more on there. So you've got quite a few different options on there. You can also go turn the side bit off if you don't want and you just want the main controls. But as you can see, it does everything it should and that's pretty good. Now colour, contrast and difference, I'll switch back to my normal laptop webcam to give you an idea and this is really up to you if you think it is better or not than the laptop's built-in standard HD webcam. And there we go, we're back onto the normal webcam. So again, you don't have any, obviously, the gesture controls or moving about, and it's stuck at that one zoom level unless you're using aftermarket software. So in conclusion, we have actually got the tiny camera that could. So it could do everything. So 4K gesture, it can follow you around the room. It can pretty much do everything. You can just wave your hand and it basically zooms in. What else can you ask? I hope you enjoyed that video, I know I did. Why not click this box up here and you'll be able to watch one of our most popular videos we've ever done. Or click this box down here and you'll also see the most recent video we've done as well. Otherwise, give us that thumbs up, like, subscribe and we'll see you next time.